Hello everybody, welcome to Therapy Dog Talk Live. I'm so excited to have you on today. I have a special guest coming, of course, as always. If we haven't met and you don't know me, I'm Sherry and my pup is Sunny and she's training to be a therapy dog. Hi. Hi. For those who don't know you, would you like to introduce yourself and your pup? Sure. So my name is Thea and I live in the Tampa area. And my dog, his name is Bentley. He's a standard poodle. His color is apricot. He's the light of my life. He just turned a year and three months, a year and three months, and has all the puppy energy. So. I love it. How did you discover the role of therapy dogs? So I'm a social worker. Okay. And I work at a psych hospital where I was a therapist. And we had the cutest, I think it was a Doberman the therapy dog her name was Katie she was so cute and I was so obsessed and this was way back before I had a dog now I work in a women's hospital as a social worker and we have therapy dogs that come around and I was like oh my gosh I have a dog now I can do this so I'm studying for licensure now so eventually when I get licensed I want to be able to practice pet therapy and have my dog in my office but for the time being until that point I want to be able to bring my dog to work which is what started <laughs> me <laughs> wanting to have him be a therapy dog. All right are you planning to volunteer with him then before he actually works with you in practice or what are you thinking there? Yeah, so right now, Bentley is very, 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 very rambunctious. Um, he's a little shy when he meets a new person, but it takes like two seconds and he will literally leave me for you. So I want to get as much practice as I can with him going to like um, events where dogs are allowed, but also volunteering so that he gets used to like, this is what you'll do as a therapy dog before I have him with me. And I'm like, there's a dog here. I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to be able to say I'm sorry so yeah have you connected with Adele or Maddie perfect match shop and Jovi therapy dog and training no I haven't are they located in Tampa as well they're not located in Tampa but they both are also training their dogs to do social work with them ah, uh, love it yeah so I'll send you over their handles when we're off here but they've been That'd on the be show great. before and they'd be great for you to connect with well, thank you yeah, absolutely. So what do you think that Bentley will enjoy about being a therapy dog? Attention. He <laughs> loves attention. And when I say he can play for hours, he can play for hours. Like hours. So <laughs> whatever gives him the most attention, I know he's going to love. The thing that I need him to like calm down on is like when he meets someone, he's like, oh, play, play, play. Like pet me, pet me, sniff, sniff, sniff. And I need him to just like calm down. They're going to pet you. Okay, <laughs> relax. So he'll definitely love the people, the attention. That's awesome. Yeah, the poodles that I've met when they're younger, they have a lot of energy. So I, I sense that coming through for you as <laughs> It well. is so hard to tame it. Oh my goodness. He's great with training, but when he's like, oh, I'm home, I'm chilling. It's like all the training comes out of his head. So <laughs> working on retention. Yeah, he's young. He has time. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of dogs don't mature until like two or three, and then they can start <laughs> No, I'm responsibilities. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bentley is my first dog ever, so I had it in my head like, oh, he's gonna turn one and mellow out and he's gonna be good. And yeah. everyone was like, oh, lol, that's not gonna happen. And if anything, I think it catapulted because he got into his personality. So now we're just like almost like a kid, like you're teaching, yeah, you're great, and I'm happy that you're the person you are, but in public, we can't be swinging on the clothes racks. So. Yeah. Responsibly suggested having some maybe quieter meeting setups for him so he can learn how to be calmness while meeting. I like so. that. When you say quieter meeting setups, do you mean with people or with other dogs? I'm guessing they're saying with people, but I'll let okay. them clarify, but just so that he can practice being calm while meeting people rather than just being like, oh my God, you're uh, right high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing that's what they're referring yeah. to. Yeah, but I'll let them sense. clarify. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. has a dog friend in our neighborhood that he's pretty good with. And her name's Coda, but she wasn't socialized as much as a puppy. So she's like super scared whenever she sees Bentley. And Bentley's like, Aww. friend, you know? <laughs> so after a while, she warms up. But I'm like, calm down, bud. Calm down. Absolutely. 
Okay, so they clarified maybe having some new people who are warned in advance to be calm when they meet him, <laughs> if you have like some friends meeting him, so that he gets used to calmly saying hi. And so that's great. I love his enthusiasm. I'm sure you do too. <laughs> oh, of course. On a good day. <laughs> right, right, right. There's good enthusiasm and then there's, well, yeah. please just calm down exactly. enthusiasm. Exactly. <laughs> Long day work, come back, just want to walk, not chase anyone today. <laughs> Absolutely. What has surprised you the most so far in your training to being a therapy dog team? Probably Bentley's stubbornness. So one of my sorority sisters has a poodle and she's like, they're great, but they're super stubborn. And everything I read up on poodles never said anything about stubbornness. So I was like, oh, Bentley's not going to be like that. Like, he's going to be super great. I call him my little show dog. He's going to do the little leaps like poodles do. And I noticed you can tell he knows what you're telling him to do. And he stares at you and just chooses not to do anything. <laughs> and it's like he won't break. He's like, I can do it. I can stand here even though she's telling me to sit. I can do it. I can do it. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God goodness please just listen so <laughs> i did not realize how stubborn he was going to be or how he is when we started doing training and stuff super yeah. food motivated but if there's not food kiss it goodbye it's not gonna happen unless you do it like a thousand times until he realizes okay i don't always need food to get treats like the whole good boy so good that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> only food with him are you working with a trainer are you training him yourself so what's your plan there so my boyfriend his dad was training him himself but then we okay. had some life events happen and he wasn't able to do that and that kind of threw bentley up into a tizzy around sure. he was like seven eight months and then he started doing all these behaviors that he's never done before so i was like okay you need structure we just went through a big life event you need structure mm -hmm. so i started with just obedience training at pet smart his trainer quit so we're looking for another one but he did really good with that honestly he surprised me in the end being able to recall the commands that we taught and if anyone's familiar with pet smart i don't know if other ones train like this as well but every week he learns a couple new skills and then at the end he has to go through all of them in order to pass and i was really i didn't know that i was really really iffy i was like family is not gonna he's you can kiss it goodbye we're not passing because you want him to remember what he learned in week one but he did super great and i was super surprised so we work with a trainer now and we're going to keep working with a trainer just because one i need accountability i'm not going to sit there and train him especially as a puppy and then two i think he does better like he's top notch with other people and then when he yeah. gets around me he gets too comfortable so I don't want to start with me and I'm like oh it's okay but other people are like no you sit I told you to sit and he does super great with that direction yeah I think that accountability can be so helpful especially if he's your first dog I know Sunny was my first dog and being able to go to a class and have someone just teach us things and even point out things I wouldn't have noticed because I wouldn't have known to correct them in the yeah. fact that I was doing them maybe not in the best way so it's definitely helpful to do that yeah absolutely I wish almost that I had started with it my boyfriend did a great job with him but when we got to PetSmart they were big on hand gestures mm -hmm. and Bentley was really good with just saying the word now I don't mm -hmm. know how dogs like register some people are like yeah they register it because I had a neighbor that was Bulgarian and his dog like if you told him to stop he's like what are you doing but when you say it in Bulgarian he understood so some people do hand gestures some people do words and then I found when I switched to hand gestures and like Bentley knows sit but when I do the hand gesture for it he's like what are you doing <laughs> why is your hand out so I wish I had started it earlier and maybe blended both yeah further rather than start with one and then switch it up midway yeah that's an interesting takeaway I know with Sunny I think because of the pandemic a lot of things she knows better as the hand signals than the mouth because I'm not very good at projecting my voice and so in the classes I had to wear a mask so she knows my oh, hand yeah. gestures better <laughs> <laughs> my vocal true. commands in some cases so it's yeah interesting. i never thought about that actually with the mask would make it a little difficult yeah it's just pairing them right so that they can yeah. respond to either yeah what do you look forward to about being a therapy dog team the most is to bring him to work that's the yeah. whole reason that i started it i'm like bentley is coming here this is my child okay or bring your kid to work day 
paired maybe equally with that is just I don't get super attached to my patients, but I really care for them. Mm -hmm. So anything that I can do to help relieve some anxieties, especially with like motherhood is I, I don't have any kids, but other than Bentley, but I can't imagine the stress and the anxiety that comes when you hear like you're, I don't know, six months pregnant, and you have to stay until you're nine months or 10 months, you know, and then having to stay in a hospital, not see your family, COVID restrictions, mm -hmm. and having this cute little bundle of joy in your face to help on lower some blood pressure, calm your anxieties. That would make me feel super great. And I'm sure he would love it too. Yeah, there's so many great studies about the impact of dogs on humans and how it can really help clients in social work or therapy. Yeah, work. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I know you're not super far along in your therapy dog journey, yes. but do you have any advice for any other teams who are thinking about becoming a therapy dog team? Anything that you've encountered? Definitely do your research. If you work in the setting, I feel like it's a little easier to pick the brain of the people who are therapy dog handlers and trainers and stuff like that to see kind of what their journey looked like. But I will say that in my head, I thought that it would be like, okay, we go through some training and we become a therapy dog. I never realized initially like going into the certifications and the test and connecting with an agency and then for my job since I work at a hospital you also have to go through a volunteer form get all that stuff approved vaccination shots for you not COVID but like flu shots and TB mm -hmm. tests and stuff like that and then of course making sure that your dog's up to his vaccine so it's a lot of logistical paperwork in the background that doesn't show itself until you're in the role or trying to train. And then also, I think you brought it up earlier, is like age, knowing your dog mainly. So Bentley is definitely the dog that's going to be super duper hyper in his puppy years. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, mellow out around two, three years is what I'm hoping for. But I don't want to minimize his personality or like put it under a blanket and be like, oh, you need to behave now. I want him to grow into that naturally and understand like this is the setting that I'm in so I need to be on a better behavior than if I'm at the dog park so trying to navigate that and still letting him live his puppy life was something that was a little difficult that going back now I probably would have handled it different than how we did for I don't know four or five months of his first year yeah, no, I think that's really great advice. And, you know, it's important to let him be a puppy and not rush that process. If he'll enjoy being a therapy dog, if he can get there, like, that'll happen when it happens, you know? Yeah. It'll take a lot of hard work, but you can't really rush adolescence. It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, as I've noticed. <laughs> when we were doing training, his trainer was amazing. I really wish she was still working for PetSmart. She had, like, 16 dogs. Some were outside, some were inside, and they were top-notch. So I was like, Bentley's gonna, he's gonna get there. And... Yeah the little things that she showed like he goes to daycare pretty often and I wish I knew this in the beginning that his daycare I love it it's amazing but when the dogs play it's just open everyone play so what he picked up was that in order for a dog to interact with me I need to bark at him and bark at him and bark at him because that's what all of them do and then what I noticed was when it was time to go to training, there's only one other dog, thank you Jesus, <laughs> in the training, but he would like bark at him and I'd have to put Bentley in timeout for literally like 15 minutes until he realized, okay, I need to stop barking at this dog. It's not play time, it's learn time. And we'd remove him, bring him back in, remove him, bring him back in. So if I knew how much daycare impacted him, I probably would have minimized how much daycare he did, probably started with half days instead of full days. So yeah, it's just a lot of unlearning, a lot of relearning, a lot of backtrack, a lot of moving forward. It's a roller coaster, I've noticed. It's not linear. <laughs> so if you are motion sick, just figure it out because it's going to be a roller coaster. Yeah. You got to ride it and try to direct it where you can. But Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple of nuggets here that I want to share from the chat. She Who Walks With Goats said, be aware there are different rules in Alliance of Therapy Dogs with regard to using your dog at work in addition to being a therapy dog and every program is different. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much you've looked into programs. Have you looked into the organizations around you? There was, I think it's called Pause for Friendship or Pause for Some. It's on the AKC website when you look on okay. it. Those are the ones from Tampa. There's 
you did not need to be certified with. I do want Bentley to get certified regardless because in order for him to come to my job, he does need to be certified. Yeah. I haven't ran into any issues with me also being an employee, but that's a good question to ask because I don't know if it would be an issue for him to go to my hospital or does he need to go up to another hospital under their umbrella, like travel to another city. They're not far within each other, but it... Yeah, it's just something worth asking when you're mm -hmm. looking at the organizations. Just let yeah. them know, like, hey, I want to use him and work with my clients as well. Mm -hmm. like, is that cool? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we can come through the designated time slots. I'm just making sure you people as well. <laughs> yeah, and then responsibilities also suggested giving him some quiet time on a place. She said they use a cot just to allow his brain to relax as well, which is mm -hmm. beneficial just as much as excitement and yeah. teaching an off switch. So. I do have a question because the issue, and I feel like this is partly my fault, just because once I got Bentley, I was like, oh my gosh, this is my baby. I love him. I want to be with you all the time. And he is crate trained. He's great with the crate. There's not a problem, no whining or anything like that. He has to go in. Sometimes he goes in willingly. But for the most part, I felt bad putting him in the crate because when he came out, he was like, guzzling water down and I'm like oh my gosh you're so thirsty and I didn't want to put the water thing to the crate because I'm like I don't want you to pee in your crate even though he's never done that outside of the first night we took him home so I kind of let him roam wherever he feels comfortable he doesn't chew on anything he doesn't have any accidents in the house he doesn't cause any issues but what I noticed is that when I got like beds for him I do the whole like what did I say to him nighttime and then he'd go to the bed wait there a few seconds and then leave again like he wasn't really registering that like this is somewhere where you can relax instead he'll just like plop on the tile somewhere and calm down so i'm having trouble trying to designate an area for him yeah that's definitely one where you can you know continue to build value in the bed by giving him treats while he's on the bed and kind of lengthening that stay and then developing a release word so that he knows when you say it, he can get off. Because having that place command will be really helpful in different environments if you need him to settle in a certain spot while you're doing something. Elise just said, try teaching the place command on a specific bed or a new elevated dog cot. Something that maybe he doesn't already have different habits with, so you can mm -hmm. really strengthen it before spreading it out to others. But I know once you really get that down, it almost like suctions them to a boundary or a bed right so when yeah. they see one they like just want to be there because yeah. it has so much value in it uh -huh. for them so okay. i'll try that yeah That's a good idea yeah sorry i really didn't mean for this to turn into like a group coaching session but no, no. <laughs> fine. i'll take it all because after a while i was just like i don't want you to be thirsty so i fill up the water and i'm like i don't think i'd want to be thirsty and i start yeah. thinking of him as like a human i'm like well i get up in the middle of the night so bentley must need to get up in the middle of that you know yeah it's hard to say it could be a little bit of a stress reaction or even just a, like i'm excited i'm out of my crate and i don't know what to do so i'm just gonna drink all the water it's, yeah. it's really hard to say because we can't read their minds <laughs> yeah yeah i wish oh my goodness It'd be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> that collar from sick. up where like you hear the dog's thoughts. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. Was there anything else that you wanted to mention while you're here? Just for anyone who maybe doesn't have a dog or is thinking about rescuing a dog. You, of course, you can do all the research you can do on that dog. But after having a dog, I'm really noticing that it's really how your relationship and how you treat them and how you raise them and stuff like that, that impacts their personality the most. Like kind of like how people are like, oh, pit bulls are bad dogs, but it's how you raise them has yeah. a lot to do with how that dog turns out. So I really thought when I got Bentley, I was having my little show dog and he's great. He does the cute little leaps like poodles do, but he is nowhere near in that mindset of a show dog he's in the mindset yes. of like i'm living my life i'm a puppy so just like giving them that leeway and understanding every dog is different they sure are and you know what the opportunity to build relationships with them and teach them new skills is never ending too oh yeah <laughs> if there's something that you wish you had done differently just do it differently it's okay yeah they pick up fast at least he does he picks up really fast if i'm teaching him something new we have to do it maybe two or three times until he understands like i was having him go through a hula hoop one time <laughs> And he picked it up so good. It was kind of difficult because he wanted to leap and the hula hoop was a little small, but they're a lot smarter than you might think they are, so. Yeah.
I love that responsibilities just shared that their bully is a service dog and people say to them sometimes that they never knew that type of dog could do service work. It really, it's all about your relationship with the dog. Yeah, more so absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you taking the time. And if anyone wants to follow along on your journey, it's Bentley on the block. On the block, Bentley on the block. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Thank say you. hello to Bentley for me. I will. And Thanks I hope you have a really me. great day. <laughs> Thank you too. All right. Bye. Bye.